guys, what's up? It's Breezy, and welcome back to Killer Frequency. Yes, we are back to the game that has all the puzzles and all the people I am trying to save. I also am wearing a wig because I was too lazy to do my hair today. Here we go! Oh yeah, remember this okay, Forrest, last time. Shut the music off. Do we have a caller? Forrest Nash here. Listeners, we've got another caller live on 189.16, The Scream. What's on your mind, caller? Hey, Forrest. I just wanted to phone in and say that I think I speak for everyone when I say that you're providing a real service for Gallows Creek tonight. It's cool what you're doing, man. Well, I'm just doing Any my time. job, friend. Anyway, tell me about yourself. What's your name? Are you keeping safe tonight? Yeah, man, I'm good, thanks. I'm at my roller rink trying to get everything ready for the harvest festival tomorrow mm. i had a guy from starling security here earlier installing the starling 4000 system so i'm a little behind as for my name my friends call me roller ricky and roller i now Wicky, consider Wicky, you Wicky. a friend my man thanks friend we're friends now huh well that's kind of you to say thanks yeah man sounds like roller skating is more than just a job to you so is this vocational i wasn't always roller ricky once upon a time, believe it or not, I used to go by just Ricky. Hmm. Yeah. Back then, things were pretty rough. Good thing found the roller rink. Crowd. Not all bad, but there was one guy. Anyway, uh, some bad stuff went down. Hmm. I harbored a lot of guilt for a long time and turned to the bottle. I didn't really talk about it or, or even know how to talk. It's just how it was. This is getting too deep. That bottle took the best years of my life. Or so I thought. It's never too late, Roller Ricky. How did you turn things around? I joined a support group. I opened up about my problems. And sharing that burden just took so much weight off. It's a long story from there, but I found Roller Disco. I learned how to have fun again, cutting loose and making shapes. Yeah. And now whenever I get down, I get down. <laughs> <laughs> Finally free from it all, man. Good for it's you. Important just to talk to somebody. That's the first step. Ain't that right, Max? Oh, hello, Max. Oh. Well, he certainly sounds like a good boy. Max is my emotional support dog. Lovely. He's a rescue dog, but I always say he's the one that rescued me. He's the best dog a guy could ask for. Of course, the first thing I did was teach him how to skate. He's better than me now, a real pro. Nice. Max can skate. Yeah, man. At first they said it couldn't be done, and then they said it shouldn't be done. But Maxie loves the rink, man. Is that another train, Maxie? Maxie loves trains, man. He's even got that special how to greet them. They're a great <laughs> pair. It sounds like you two make a great pair. Uh, Maxie appreciates all the positivity you're throwing out, my man. You know, I'm actually hosting free skating lessons tomorrow at the festival. I think it's a great opportunity to give back to the community. Man, all this talk of skating has got me itching for a boogie. Before I switch my radio off for the night, could I request a song for us? Something I can groove to, you know, something funky. Mm -hmm. It'll be me and Maxie's final boogie breakdown tonight. Then I think we'll take it down a level. I can do that. Thanks again for calling. You and Max, be safe now, okay? Bye, Maxi. Oh, you got it, man. Peace. Well, folks, this next one goes out to Roller Ricky and Max. Enjoy. Which one am I playing? This one? You'll like this next song. I really needed that call, you know, after everything. Yeah, I get that. He talked a bit much for my taste, but... It is inspiring to hear somebody come back from the brink like that. I yeah, think that, we're gonna that's get another call from him. <sighs> you were thinking about Max on skates, weren't you? Well, uh, would you look at that? Another caller on the line. Lovely. What are the odds? Better take it. All right, ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. Welcome back to <clears throat> 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nash. How are you tonight, caller? I'm doing okay. Oh, Carrie. I made it home safe. Carrie! Hey. I, I just wanted to thank you for doing what you could earlier. You know, even though not everybody made it, and uh, I don't know. Hey, 
it's okay. You were so brave earlier. She was the one the You're killer looked now. at and I then was like, I'm why. not going to kill her. Why he didn't? Why am I? Why what, Carrie? You're alive. Why did he spare me? After what he did? Why let me go? Maybe he didn't kill you because he saw you as a victim. Maybe. But why would that stop him from killing me too? After everything he did to- These stupid hazing nights have to stop. Carrie, you did so well tonight. Stay safe and rest. Rest up, Help girl. is coming to Gallows Creek. We just need to hold on. Thanks, Peggy. Hey, Forrest? Uh, could I request a song? What song? Of course, Carrie. What song? Any song by Blast Processor. Oh. Thank you. This next I was one just listening to that. goes out to Carrie. There we go. You know, what Carrie just said has really got me thinking. About what? The whistling man left her alone. Why? There must be a reason. Because he was selected. When targets. it comes to masked whistling killers, I don't think a reason is a key part of their process. Well, it's something to consider. I need to take a break. If you want to stretch your legs, now's the time. Just hit the Peggy button when you want to get back on air. If I want to stretch my legs, now why would I want to stretch my legs? I don't want to stretch my legs. This place scares me. I guess I'll organize my stuff. I can put it all on this table. That way it's not such a mess. Can you close the door, please? Please close. Keep closing. Like, the fact that the door doesn't have a lock on it does not make me feel well. Come on. Just clean up this floor. I'm ready. Let's get going, Peggy. Alrighty. We could run another segment or scratch that for us. We have a caller. Sweet. You're through to 189.16, the scream. What's your emergency? Hello again, Forrest. Oh, that call with the teens was awful. Those poor kids. Still, I'm I'm glad the girl didn't get hurt. Thanks for Disappear. your concern. Call. Are you in trouble? What's on your mind? I wanted to ask you again to play my song, Forrest. You said you were going to play it, but you didn't. Your yeah, name we was don't Dawn, have right? It, Dawn. I'm Peggy, yes. Oh, well remembered. My name is Dawn, and I wanted to ask you again to play my tune, Forrest. Long Ride Home? You know, the one that Peggy said she threw outside the window? I'll play a track for you, Don, but maybe pick another one? We don't exactly have that one in rotation right now. No, Forrest. You do have it. It's just outside the window. There's a serial killer on the loose. I can't just go outside hunting for a record. Uh-uh. I'm really sorry, Don, but we just can't get it right now. But wasn't the whistling man just at the old murder house? That's miles from the station. It won't take a second to grab it. You really have to listen to this song? Are you freaking kidding me? There's a serial killer on the loose. You want me to go outside and grab a disc that we threw out into the trash because it's probably a trash song. Nope. Nope. I'm sorry, Don. I'm just not going out there. Oh, but I think you will. Forrest? Peggy, I'm, I'm calling with more than a request. I know something. I think I know who's gonna be next. Yeah, what? me. Are you serious? Play my song, Forrest, and you'll find out. Oh. Uh, well, folks, 
Here's some music for you while I think things over. Oh yeah, here's here's a song. Here, play the song. No. Is she serious, Peggy? She's serious about hearing that song, that's for sure. Peggy, I mean, is she serious about... I don't know, Forrest, but we don't really have a choice, do we? If she's telling the truth... I don't care. I don't care. I'm not I going outside. Go out there. Forrest, someone might be in danger. And despite your being so damn curmudgeonly, I think you... Stop it, Peggy, just... <sighs> I'll go. You're a good man, Forrest. I'll slide you the key to the fire door. <laughs> wait, wait. Our fire door has to be unlocked? Yeah, it... Uh, you know, I never thought about it, but yeah. We should talk to Reggie about that later. Anyway, I'll hold the board down while you're out. Maybe I'll even get a caller. That could be exciting. 189.16, The Screen. With me, Peggy. Peggy, why don't you go? I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. This killer is now going to be inside the premise. Locked tight. Oh, Lord. This is just not fair. I don't want to do this. that one is it uh. I hate this game I hope she'll be happy when I'm brutally murdered by the whistling man out here in the open. Hello? No, for real. Like I'm I'm about to die. Oh, that's the whistling man. He's literally here. Oh my god, the whistling man is here. Of course. It locks behind me. And of course the key doesn't work on this side. Fantastic. Maybe there's another way back in through the basement. A door, elevator, or something. Guys. This <clears throat> Which window would she have thrown it out of? <laughs> Here it is. Long ride home. broken too. Only the best for KFAM. See if I can fix this. Looks like a power issue. Oh. I should check the fuse box. My gosh. This is a setup. A fuse box. I'm locked outside with a serial killer I just saw. Are you kidding me right now, people? Are y'all kidding me?
Looks like I'm gonna have to hunt around for some new fuses. Are you joking right now? Are you joking? This is an actual joke. I'm supposed to find fuses outside in the trash. Just normal noises in an alley. And while all this is happening, he's breaking in. I'm telling you, this is what's happening. Two more. We can do it. Hardcore sweating. I'm gonna go grab the other one. I do not like being outside with Sia Killia around, around the bank. He's just waiting to grab me. Eat me for eat me for dinner. Place this somewhere, please. Thank you. Nah, that's not right. Do the fuses add up properly? What do you mean, add up properly? 70, 30, 60. Ah. Ah. This is a fuse. It's 30. But we need 70? Ah. Oh. Tell me I have to stay out here more? This isn't some kind of time thing. It's like, oh, you've been outside for too long. The killers come to get you. All right, so if we do 30, 60, 65, and then we'll do this one for 70. Bingo! Head down. Put your 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 head down. I could probably survive that fall. See, he's already in here. He's hiding. Looks like the janitor's closet. What did Peggy say his name was? Clive? Should I open this? Oh, God. What the hell? Peggy is not gonna believe this. Oh. Yeah, I had a feeling Clive was the killer, but you know. See, he's now in here. Oh my god, the killer's in here. <laughs> he's in here. Hmm. I wonder how the show's going. Oh, he's in here. The killer's in here. The killer's in here. Oh my god. God, please let this be the last locked door. 
in here. Oh my god, the killer's in here. The killer's in here. Where's the key? <sighs> Can we not block that? You know what I'm saying? We can't block that. Ah, there's the beautiful key. I should be able to get back to the studio now. Who is next? Chuck Brody, Aunt Williams, Kim Walker. Can I take this with me? I feel like... I should probably read this all, right? Power station, hospital, gas station. So that was gas station? I don't remember. So Rebecca Alley should be next. Rebecca Allen? Former Gallows High football captain Chuck Brody suffered a career ending injury as a victim, fell disaster later this year, telephone was sort of recovery, drop tickets in the bucket, okay. Yeah, I feel like we should take this with us. Oh, we can't take this with us. Okay. Well, I'm gonna take a photo. Thank God for technology. You know what I'm saying? Whew. All right. But if I had to guess, it's Rebecca Allen. All right. Does this unlock? Yes! Can we lock this door back, please? Eee, get me back in the studio, please. Please, I just want to be back in the studio where I feel safe. Isn't that such a good song, folks? And now for... Jesus, Forrest, you've been gone for ages. I thought something had happened. Yeah, something, something did happen. Something did happen. Clive the janitor might be Clive the murderer. What? Yes. Let's start from the beginning. The, uh, the fire door locked by. Why is... What just happened? Why, can't, why did that skip? Why did you heave that thing all the way up here? Uh, because the basement's creepy as hell, and I don't like standing around down there. Fair. All right, let's run through this again. We have a creepy board you found in a creepy basement made by our creepy janitor, who you think is the creepy whistling man. Yep. yep. And on the creepy board are the names Chuck Brody, Kim Walker, Rebecca Allen, and Aunt Williams. Correct. Correct. And you think one of these people will be the whistling man's, Clive's, next target? That's right. And we've got to find him. You said there are four locations listed there, too? The hospital, the power station, the gas station, and the trailer park. Yeah, Clive must think the target is at one of those locations. Forrest, you're going to have to figure out if any of the potential targets are at one of these locations tonight. Hit the button if you need any help. Oh. All my stuff came upstairs. That's beautiful. Okay, so... Hospital... Hmm. Okay. So we have trailer park, gas station, power station, hospital. Safety convention... I'd like to read this. Mm, 
Local legend takes it in happen. Christine Gaston for Sultan man who am I 14 years ago? Keep me busy as Asked for me anonymous. Hmm. Oh, the brain's working in overtime, guys. It's really working in overtime. Well, that makes no sense. If we're looking at the dates, Stein. Well, that's Peter Stein. Wait, what? Mr. P. Stein. Okay. Mrs. K. Stein. All died. On Thursday, May 12th. Oh, that's 1977. Mrs. Mr. P. Stein, Mr. K. Stein. So she's dead. She died. Kim's dead. So she, we don't have to worry about her. She passed away. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Mm. Suffered a career ending injury. Victim with fistless. So they just have a surgery recovery or about. Helping him buy some lottery tickets. Hopefully he gets lucky. Yes. Okay. This is making sense. Yep. So he owns a gas station that he hopes to work at. Which, where's that gas station card? So he's for sure probably at the gas station right now. Kim's dead. Rebecca moved to New York. Right? Yeah. And then Tuesday 1st through Sunday the 6th, he should be at the hospital. Tuesday Ridge Health and Safety Convention, right? Does that have an address? Okay. Where's the hospital at? That's where he probably thinks they are. He probably thinks... I think it's the gas station. I think it's the gas station and Chuck Brody. It's my guess. How's it going? I think... Ah, I can use some help. Uh, it's not going well. I could use See. some help. Okay, let's review the basics. We need to work out who the next target is. There's four locations, right? And four people. Correct. We need to figure out if anyone is at any of the four locations tonight. And if they are, we can call them and warn them. There must be some connections between the notes. That makes sense. Great. Need any more help? I'm good. I'm good now. Thanks, Peggy. I think no problem. I think maybe the hospital for Ant or the power station. Or uh, it's probably the power station for Ant and then um, Chuck Brody uh, gas station. All right, I think I'm ready. How's it going? I'm ready. I'm ready, Peggy. Are you sure? I think We've so. only got one shot at this. Yep, let's do this. I'm I only sure. sat here let's and hypothesized okay. forever. Name first. Who do you think the target is? Chuck Brody. Chuck Brody. And where will I find them? The gas station. The gas station. Okay, I'm dialing. One moment. Chuck Brody, listen, 
I know this sounds crazy, but we have reason to believe the Whistling Man is coming for you. You need to get yourself and everyone else out right now. The Whistling Man? Who the hell are you? Who is this? This is Forrest Nash. Listen, the Whistling Man's back. We found a list with your name on it and... Oh, God. It's today. The year I finally let myself forget. I... Forget what? Forget? For, forget what? Forget. No, no, man. I gotta get out of here. Yeah, run. I... I think he ran off. Well, fingers crossed that Chuck... <laughs> Jesus! It sounds like something blew up. Was that the gas Using station? bombs now? I... I... Is Chuck? I don't know. Hang on, we're getting a call. Hello? Chuck? Chuck? Chuck! Of course! The whole goddamn gas station's gone up! Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. I got everyone to follow me out. Good. The town's only ambulance was blown to hell, though. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Damn it, that fireball threw me. I got to get to the hospital. I'm not feeling great. Forrest, man. I can't thank you enough, but... Yeah. I gotta go. Okay. Wait, I... That's fine. Damn it. We lost him. What was that about today? Oh, Forrest. The call board is lighting up. Get us into some music while I deal with this. Here's some music while we regroup here on... KFAM 189.16, The Stream. What's his date? The third? I don't think there's anything on here that was the third. There's gotta be more in the basement to show us who Clive is targeting. And if that's the case, we can get ahead of him. Stop the killings before they can happen. Forrest, we need to go back down. By we, you, you mean, mean me? me, right? Yep. Like I said, I need to handle all these calls. Maybe start with that creepy mannequin room you mentioned before. I still have a lot of questions about those, by the way. Me too. Lovely. So now I just go back downstairs into the creepy basement where the killer is in. Like, I left every door possibly open because this game doesn't lock doors. Oh, this is infuriating, but it's fine. We won't die, right? Ah. Uh, I love the scary music, you know? It just makes me feel so safe. So, so safe. What the hell? Did I just see something? this always here? I must have missed it when I brought everything upstairs. Bus town! I think this goes to that other door down here. Oh, guys, I really am not liking this. I hate the vibes. I hate being in this basement. I hate it all. You know? Oh, lovely. Peggy, give me some warning before yelling down the intercom. Sorry. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. Peggy, I've found a tape and a map down here. A map of what? Looks like it might be to somewhere in this storage area. Weird. Well, maybe the tape will give us more information. Give it a play. Um, oh, you know, I'm not good with these things. And play. No. Play. George Bell. 1968. That's when this all began for me. Follow the maps. Find the tapes. I'll be waiting. Wait. George Bell. 
George Barrow? We all heard that he drowned after a night out drinking. Was it actually Clive? Has Clive really been the whistling man for that long? He says I need to follow the maps and find the tapes. I guess that's what this map is about. I think we need to see what else is hidden down here. Be careful, Forrest. Keep looking. Buzz the intercom when you found something. Okay. Sure can do. Time of autopsy is 7 a.m. Cause of death is asphyxiation from drowning. The degree of rigor mortis indicates that the subject has been deceased for five hours. That puts the time of death Small lacerations to arms, legs, and face, typically obtained by running through foliage. Severe blistering to the feet, as though the deceased had been running without stopping. Is this where I die? I'm scared, Mom. Preliminary toxicology results shows no signs of inebriation. However, a high amount of cortisol was found, indicating elevated levels of stress in the immediate moments before death. So it's not Clive. is not going to believe this. No. I wonder what... I have a feeling I'm supposed to... I'm going to hit this button at some point. Peggy. You're never going to believe Peggy. 
The craziest thing just happened, Peggy. Yeah, like I'm not opening that up. What have you found, Forrest? Oh. It's an autopsy tape. Doesn't say for who, but I think it must be for George. Poor George. He was so young. Something's bugging me, Peggy. What do you mean? I swear I recognize the voice of the woman talking on the tape. I just can't place it. Seriously? Do you think you've met her before? I don't know. I mean, I just got here recently. Maybe it's the lady... I don't know. Found another tape that talks more about how George died. What did it say? It sounds like he was running for his life. Sprinting through trees and bushes, getting cut up all over. What would drive someone to do that? I'm not sure yet. There's also a tape about a toxicology report. There were no signs of drinking or that he was on anything. What? But everyone said he went swimming drunk and drowned. Nope. It was in the newspaper and everything. I found a tape that introduces a new detail to the story. Post-mortem injury. Apparently, his arm got caught in a car door. A car door? Yeah, after he died. How do you suppose they can tell? How can they tell? I'm a radio producer, not a coroner. I, um, I think I found Clive's last recording. I think Clive might be gone. I think he's gone, gone? guys. I think he's I gone. I found a confession. Not for any killings, but for playing a part in covering up George's death. He left this behind in case he died. He hoped someone would find it. You... Do you think the Whistling Man already got him? Absolutely. Possibly. We've had a lot of callers tonight, but maybe not every victim made it to the phone, you know? We don't know how many there really are. We really don't. Forrest, that's dark. I know, but Clive said he had read about other murders in other towns, and that the murders were all folks who knew about the incident, and the killings were getting closer to Gallows Creek. Hmm. He said he wanted to do something good for once. The board in his office. He wasn't tracking people down to kill them. He was tracking them down to save them. Correct. Ugh, why didn't he just come out with all of this? Uh, he said his employer threatened his family if he spoke out about any of it. His employer? The one who orchestrated the cover-up? Yeah. Oh, Clive. I'm sorry for thinking you killed all those people. Do you think you found everything, Forrest? I think there's gotta be more down here. I need to find all the tapes. You think so? How much did Clive hide down there? Well, if there are more tapes, then there must be more maps to follow, right? That seems to be the case. All right, then. Buzz the intercom when you find something and want to discuss it. You're telling me I didn't find everything? Let me look at this. Let me... Let me look at this. Tape. Oh, oh. Was there more? Stupid mouse traps. I really just didn't want to open that door in there because it seemed really scary. But maybe that's the one I'm missing because I feel like I went through everything, you know? September 2nd, 1987, hospital gas, roller rink delivered, installed. What was installed? Kiff. What was installed? Security? Alarm? Oh, great. That's great. Oh, 
Oh God. Oh God. I don't like this. I'm taking a photo of this because I don't know what this is. Okay. We read it. We're going to keep that with us. Anything? Anything else down here, friends? Anything at all? These don't open. What was that noise? What was that noise? You got to be kidding me. Okay, we're looking for any extra ones I may have missed. I feel like I got them all. They all kind of moved quite uh, s smoothly, you know? I get this one? Shoot. Shoot. Let's read this. This has to be important. Can I read? Can I read? Uh, the deceased is Caucasian male, age 18. The cause of death is itself should be drawing shown by the signs of physication. I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. Yeah, that seems... Yeah, that seems very important. It is the coroner's opinion that the subject likely feared for his life and was chased, resulting in a fall from a height into a body of water where he hit his head, was knocked out, and drowned. Following that, he was moved. You have to show up. We need to have a talk. That recording. Well, I think that's the one we missed. Makes sense. That is a big, big uh, hint there. And maybe there's another one that we missed at the very beginning? In another tape, the coroner comes to the same conclusion as I did. George was running from something. Maybe an animal? Maybe, but then there's this next bit, where the coroner thinks he was moved post-death. Moved the body? How weird. At the end of the tape, someone burst in and demanded the doctor, uh, Dr. Sullivan, to stop recording. Yes. She was her caller from earlier. Yes. Well, then our caller was involved in the conspiracy around this boy's death. We need to call her back once we finish down here. It, it looks like she might know something about what's going on. I found a written autopsy report. What does it say? According to that, it's just like you said at the start. George drowned after getting drunk. Said he liked to fight, too. But hmm. that contradicts the tape. Correct. I know. And I think I know why. There's a note with a report that says, I'm sorry I made you do this, Virginia. Virginia. If it was on the autopsy report, then Virginia must be our coroner. Correct. Wait, the caller from earlier, when we had to call the takeout restaurants, wasn't her name Virginia? Do you think you found everything? 
I think I so. I think so. Forrest, what's going on here? Someone wanted that boy's death to seem like an accident. And they hired Clive to make it look that way. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, come back upstairs when you're ready. We need to figure out our next step. Oh, does this automatically put me upstairs? Because I would love to not have to walk up those. Oh, beautiful. Thank God you're back, Forrest. I've been running out of stuff to pad our airtime with. We're supposed to keep a show going with all this happening. Great question. It's our job. This is our job, Peggy. We, we gotta do it. <sighs> You're right. So, what's the plan now? I think we should call Virginia back. Yep. All right. I'll get her on the line. Hello again, Gallows Creek. This is Forrest Nash. We're circling closer to the truth behind tonight's events. To this end, we're calling back one of our earlier callers. Miss Virginia. Virginia Sullivan. Pick up. Fredman Plunker here. Who's this? Is it you? Goose. Plunker, hey, it's the Radio Man, Forrest Nash. Radio Man? What's up? Solving mysteries, saving lives. The huge. Right, 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 right on. Plunker, what are you doing at Virginia's house? Sh she asked if we could stay to keep an eye out for that whistling turd. So we're hanging out, bro. Fun. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's big of you, Plunker. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's nothing. <sighs> Can I speak to Virginia? Sure thing, Radio Man. I'll just go get her. Who is this? Hey, Virginia, it's Forrest. I'm I'm glad you're still okay. Oh, Forrest. Sorry, I'm still jumpy. Sorry to hear that, but listen, hey, we need to talk. We need to talk. What about? Let's get to the point. We're calling because we think you can help us understand why this is happening tonight. Me? What would I know? Clive. Does the name Clive mean anything to you? Clive? No. I don't know that name. What are you asking about this for? You mentioned that name earlier when you called us the first time. I don't know what I said then. I was petrified for us. Oh, Clive's sure. the janitor at our station, and we know you spoke to him in the past. Forrest, please. You don't know what you're doing. He'll come for me. Virginia, it's okay. Clive won't be coming after you. We think Clive's dead. Dead? But isn't he? He's the whistling man, Forrest. Nope. We thought so too, but... You don't understand. All those years ago, he... It's okay, Virginia. He's gone. We found evidence to suggest he... Well... And we found your autopsy reports for George Barrow. How? I saw him destroy them. Who? Well, he didn't. I don't know if he kept them or made copies or what, but we found them. And we know it's related to what's happening tonight, mm -hmm. which is why we called you. Why did you write a false report? I... All right. One day, I came into She should go to, to jail for a, this. I don't know why she's admitting a to boy this. boy on my slab. And as I finished the autopsy, this man, Clive, he just burst in and he started making demands to give over the reports, to falsify what I found. Hmm. Of course I said no, but, well, when someone wants to make you do something, they can use the carrot or the stick. For me, he used both. You see, my sister is sick. Mm -hmm. She has a chronic condition that's never going away. Mm -hmm. It's expensive to treat, and it was getting to where I couldn't afford it. And Clive promised me that his employer would pay for my sister's treatment if I did what he said, and that if I ever spoke about this, he'd beat me to within an inch of my life. I don't know why he had me do it, but... My sister needed me. Hmm. You have to understand. 
She needed me. I get it. We I understand. It. Thank you, Virginia. That was brave. God, I just want this nightmare to end. Me too. This will help end it, Virginia. Thank you. Stay safe, Virginia. Hmm. Okay, so... So, Virginia is tied up in all of this. Clive threatened her to keep quiet about George's death. But for who? Why cover up these details? We could try Sandra. What would Sandra know? I don't know, but we have to start somewhere. Anyway, just be careful when you're talking to her. Don't push too hard. We don't want her to hang up. Okay. I'll be careful. Alright, calling her now. Hopefully she's at her jazz studio. I don't remember who Sandra is. It's kind of bad, but oh well. Aha! Forrest, you're through. Hello, this is Sandra at Jazz Pizzazz Jazz Studio. Who is this? Hello again, Sandra! It's oh, Forrest the Nash jazz of 189.16, The Scream. And you're live on air. <laughs> oh, I always thought folks called into a radio show, not the other way around. It's different How here. Jazzy. What can I do for you? Uh, well, <laughs> we're trying to understand what's behind the attacks tonight. Mm -hmm. We had a few questions. My forest, of course. Heck, after the way you saved my life, I'd say yes to just about anything you asked. Oh, really? That sounds nice. Really? Well, that sounds nice. <laughs> I might just call you back tomorrow then, too. <laughs> uh, you got my number. But what about tonight? Is there anything you want to do a little riz right action now? there? Remember why we called, Forrest. Sorry, my, of my bad. Of course. Of course. Do you know why the whistling man might have targeted you? Ha! As far as I can tell, he was just a knife wielding psycho with superhuman cardio. Superhuman He'd have chased cardio. after anybody. Right. Well, we think he might be chasing specific people. People who know about the death of a boy named George. Oh, I don't know anything about that. Sorry. Hmm. Hmm. Have you had to keep quiet about anything? Any secrets you've had to keep? What would I have to keep quiet about? I don't know. I mean, could be that you've seen something or heard something. I never saw anything. And even if I did, what would that matter? And, and it was years ago. You okay? Sandra? Are you okay? It was years ago. We know. We know, Sandra. We know. You do? You know about? Uh, yes. Of course. <sighs> this studio is my life. After I found the body in the river, I couldn't lose my studio. Do you understand? Sure. I understand. I understand. Whether I just kept going up, he said he'd stop if I just needed to keep quiet. And everything will be okay. Hmm. Of course. We understand. I mean, it's not like I killed him. What was the harm in saying I found him in the reservoir instead of the river? Right? Right? I'm sorry. I can't do this. Hey, we got a lot of information out of her. And she's gone. I don't think that could have gone any better. I agree. You truly did great, Forrest. Thank well, you. folks, if anyone out there has any thoughts on what's going on tonight, please call in. That's good timing. We've got a call waiting just this second. Welcome Spring to 189.16 The Scream with me, your host, Force Nash. Nash. Hi, Boris. I know this is really out of the blue with everything happening tonight, but I wondered if you could send this special birthday message to my uncle. Sure, why not? You know what? I'd welcome a change of pace. I'd be glad to. Thank you, Boris. He's my Uncle Ronnie. His first name's Peter, but he never liked his name. But since he always had salt and pepper hair, even as a kid, can you believe it? Folks always called him Pepper. Uh, thanks for the history lesson. Is there anything besides happy birthday? You would like to say to Mr. Pepper? Oh my God, damn it! Yes, tell him he can get the best birthday deals and party packages here at Pony's Pizza. Start a You son of a bitch! Stop calling. I us. love it. Sorry, Forrest. Let's just move on. 
We've already got another caller on the line. Man, these this are is one eighty nine point six crazy. The scream. I'm Forrest Nash. You're on the air, caller. <laughs> caller. Is he crying? Is he laughing? Is he choking? <laughs> Ponty. Ponty's pizza always delivers. Come rain or sleet or whistling man, we'll be there. <laughs> Forest? Forest? Are you okay? I hate this man. <sighs> Forrest? I hope the whistling man gets in with his own pizza slicer. Jesus, That's pretty Forrest. Rough. Sorry, sorry, that was... That was too much. It's okay. It's been a high-stress night. Don't worry about him anymore, okay? Not for tonight, anyway. I think he's spent for now. We've got another call. Whenever you're ready. I've been ready. Folks. Don't spend your money at Pawnee's Pizza. That's all I'm going to say about that. Mm, moving along, I'd like to welcome another caller to 189.16, The Scream, with me, Forrest Nash. Who may I say is calling? Well, hello again, Forrest. Don. Don. Ah, uh, I bet I know why you're calling. I'm sorry I didn't play your song. There's a lot going on. But please... Uh, never mind that now. First, I'm calling because I need your help. Oh, yeah? Are you in danger? Are you in danger? Oh, I sure am. Do you mean... Yes, he's after me now. You? I think so. He must have heard me on the radio helping you. Right. right. Okay. Tell us everything. I was out following a lead, trying to work out who would be next. After Chuck. And what happened? And I started to feel like I was being followed. Mm -hmm. I came back to my apartment building, but this newfangled security system has me locked out. I need you to help me get inside. Ask a neighbor. Can a neighbor let you in? Starling 4000, user manual. Ah, these codes should come in handy. Oh, I only moved in last week. I don't know anybody yet. There's not even a buzzer here, only the keypad for the entry code. I need that code to get inside. Which apartment block do you live in? Maybe one of our listeners lives there too. It's the New Woodside apartment building between the town and the trailer park. But I doubt any of your listeners live there. I don't have many neighbors. Sounds like a prime piece of real estate. Hmm. The sound really carries at night. Shit. Is that a neighbor's dog? Yes, it is. Boy, I wish he'd muscle that thing and oh. And now he's blasting David Scopo out of his window. Hmm. I can't get any. What's the name of the security system? Uh, there's a sticker on the box. It says Starling Security 4000. Yeah, we got it right here. And it looks like it wants a, a six digit number 715914. I don't know why my audio just cut out. Hello? Audio? Return, please. We'll see what we can do. Thank you, Forrest. Yeah, of course. Don't worry, Don. Thank you, Forrest. 715914. Anyway, you. Always. I'll sit out of sight. Call me back soon. I'm ready to go, Shoddy. I, all right, I got folks. this. Here's a little tune for you all to enjoy while I try to break Don into her apartment. You were pretty quiet there, Peggy. Forrest, was it just me, or was there something... Yeah, it wasn't just you. Something was weird. 
about that. Yeah. Well, tell you what. We have a Starling 4000 or whatever here at KFAM. Clive bought one for the station. Maybe we can find something to help. Well, I'm not sure who. But to help someone. Hey, 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 hey. Didn't... Hey, hey, hey. <sighs> okay, so she's locked out of the Woodside Apartments, and somewhere, Clive probably has the papers for the Starlink 4000. What, didn't I find a paper earlier that was like, we have the same things? So am I letting somebody into our... Am I letting... I think this, by me telling them, I'm gonna be letting them in. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense, guys? Like, we have the same system. I'm giving the key to get into this system. Why are we doing this? She should just be alone. Welcome back, Forrest. Find anything? The yeah. Starling 4000 security manual. It's got a bunch of codes. Good. And did you find anything else? Nothing, except the manual. All right. Well, I'll get Dom back on the line then, Forrest. I'll let you take it from here. Thanks, Peggy. When you're ready, shut the music off. Line one, whenever you're ready. Done. Are you there? This is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. Oh, thank God you're back. I'm so afraid. What's the code to the gate? The code is 715-914. Thank you, Forrest. <laughs> Forrest, what did we do? Let's just see what happens. I think, Forrest, there's another call coming in. Evening, caller. You're live on... Forest. Process what just happened. Oh, I should have. Oh. So the whistling man is a woman? I know. I, I can't believe it. She called up. You spoke to her multiple times. Hmm. I knew she wasn't right. Is that right, Sherlock? Why do you think she requested that song? To get me outside. To get me outside? Maybe, but how? She didn't know the song was outside to start with. That's right. She never actually attacked me out there. So? What now? I guess I should make an announcement. We do have new info. Okay, kill the music and you can make the announcement. Okay, you're live in three, two... Hey folks, this is Forrest Nash here. I hope you're all safely locked inside. For those of you listening to that last call, you might be wondering what to make of it all. Here's our take. <sighs> we now believe the killer is actually a woman. One who might manipulate you into letting her in before she attacks you. Oh my gosh. I'm sad to say, but it's time to trust no one. The killer was calling themselves Don. This could be a fake name. If anyone needs help or you have info on the killer, yeah. please call in. 
just killed a you man You folks have my new pup. number, right? It's 911. Hopefully, our next caller can help shed some light on our killer. <sighs> I'm just so depressed. Right all right, guys, that is the end of this episode for Killer Frequency. We're almost there. We're we're almost at the end of figuring out this killer, their motives, why they're doing what they're doing. However, I just, I have to go to bed tonight with the fact of knowing that I should have grabbed that other piece of paper. Like, I remember looking at it, but I just didn't take it with me for some reason. Because um, you can't have that many items. And at the time, I took those two items but it didn't register that I had seen it because I feel like had I known that we all had the same security system we could have warned him I should have started the security you know I, I killed somebody and their dog today guys I, that's what I just did um so next time around I think we're at the tail end of this game we were so close it may be a short episode next time but I hope you guys are enjoying this series this game is fun it gets my brain juices going and it also shows how dumb I can be so don't forget the small details remember to go back even if you don't want to go in the scary basement and I will see you in the next one Bye bye. Oh, that's the whistling man. I hate the vibes. I hate being in this basement. I hate it all. You know? I left every door possibly open because this game doesn't lock doors. This is a setup. A fuse box. I'm locked outside with a serial killer I just saw. Are you kidding me right now?